Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. Obviously, we're in the new tarantula room. Billy and I spent the last week moving things over. It was a nightmare to say the least, and I'll get more into that in a future video where I took some footage of how we packed them up into the cars, how we got them to the new house, setting up all that good stuff, but that'll be a ways off. Also, yes, we will be doing a room tour. Obviously, we're in the brand new room. We wanna make sure that we're able to show everything off now, and there's so much more room here, it's kind of mind-boggling. Uh, Billy and I, the other night, were up here marveling at the fact that I was able to fit this many animals into the small room back in our other house. I mean, it's really astounding to see how many animals there are here. So maybe I'll just flash a little bit of video, just a pan of the room. It's it's much larger than my original room. There's more warm room to work. We can do our rehousings up here, which we're gonna be doing in a moment. Just so many cool things going on in terms of the room. So there'll be more of that in the future. Today, we're gonna to be working on rehousing a Salmopius or Salmopius Victori, or the Darth Maul. I like Darth, I'm a Star Wars fan, so I'm gonna go with the Darth Maul, but the other one is also the Mexican Half and Half, I believe. Awesome spider, I love Salmopius species or Salmopius species. They've become one of my favorites after ignoring them for a good many years, and I've been excited to, to do a rehousing with these guys for a little while now. So, enough of me talking, let's get into the actual rehousing. There we go. Obviously. All right, for this episode, we are going to be rehousing my Salmopius, the Salmopius Victori, or the Darth Maul. I'm going with Darth Maul. I know there's a different, a couple different ones out there. One of them is the Mexican half and half, but we're huge Star Wars fans here, and everybody, uh, as soon as I say Darth Maul, Rome knows exactly which spider I'm talking about, so we're going with that one. So, what we're going to do is bring this over and rehouse it. In the meantime, we're going to do things a little differently moving on and talk about some of the setup requirements beforehand. Now, when I picked these guys up, it was actually in October of 2019. I picked up this and a, these and a bunch of guys. And at that time, we had them in a dram vial as slings. Now, five ounce deli cup would work just as well with them as would a two by two by four around there. Those AMAC boxes that everybody is so enamored with that make great little sling enclosures. And spice containers. I've seen those coming out. A lot of people use the, the spice containers. You can buy them off Amazon. Those work great. This is a species that although it's arboreal as a sling, it will actually burrow. So you want to make sure that you give it some substrate to burrow in, a little piece of cork bark hide, expect it to create some dirt and sphagnum moss curtains around there to hide in. I get people that panic because the sling immediately goes in and fills up the space behind the cork bark and they're worried because it's not being arboreal, they will burrow to start off. And you do want to keep them moist, again with the moisture, make sure that the bottom layers stay moist, the top can dry out a little bit, that helps to prevent from mold and fungus growth. Now, as a sling, if you can fit a water dish in there, that would be the th way to go. I will say when it was in the dram vial, it didn't get one. But when I moved it as a juvenile into the enclosure that it is in now, we did add a water dish. It kept covering them up. You'll see in a moment there was a couple of them in there buried. So as far as the juvenile enclosure, once again, few inches of moist substrate. This here container is about eight and a half inches tall by four and two, four point two five across in diameter. I get these off of Amazon. I will try to remember to post a link, but I always forget to post the link. But I like them for arboreals. I could have used a thirty-two ounce deli cup would work, or if you want to go with something a little larger, one of the one-gallon mainstay containers that you can get from Walmart will work wonderfully with juveniles or smaller arboreal species. Now for substrate. We have BioDude in here. I've been using that for just about everything lately. I like it. It's dependable. It's going to cost you a little bit more if you go that route. But if you, you know, don't have, want to worry about you know, a substrate drying out too quickly or having stuff in it, like if you buy topsoil, it works wonderful. You can also use cocoa, you, cocoa fiber. You can use peat. You can use topsoil. You can use a mix of any of those. will work perfectly fine. Just know that if you're using cocoa fiber, you're going to have to keep it moist. Pay a little more attention to keeping it moist because it dries out quickly. It'll also settle quite a bit. And for people using peat or topsoil, you can always add some vermiculite or minced, mixed, minced sphagnum moss to the mixture down here that allows the water to percolate in a little more easily. Sometimes I've found with topsoil, it'll puddle up top. And of course, always include the cork bark. And I like to put in some leaf litter because it looks pretty. So now here is the juvenile closure. There is the spider in there. It actually just molted a little while ago. I was hoping to have this one actually rehoused about two months ago, but we had to wait to get into the house. And I didn't want to create any more larger enclosures in the tiny room I had over there. So we waited till we were over here. But what we were going to do is put that into one of these. All right, so the cage we're going to go into, this is made by Primal Cages. It's a new company. I've been trying out all of the magnetic top cages. I believe there's tarantula cribs. I'm going to be picking up some of those. 
This is a buddy of mine that I've been talking to for years, and I'll go more into this. We're going to do a review of these later on because I bought a bunch of them. Contact me a couple months ago and asked me if I wanted to check them out, and I bought a bunch of them to kind of try out, really liking them. So we're going to be putting them into this one here. And then what we have is BioDude soil. We have some leaf litter. We have a piece of cork bark. I'm using a cork bark round for this one, and what I've done, I don't know if this shows up, is I've thrown some sphagnum moss behind it and even inside of it so that the spider can use that to kind of build its dirt curtains and dig. Now, sometimes I use cork bark flats. It really doesn't matter. I've had people ask which are better. Here's a cork bark flat. I kind of con uh, considered using that one. With the cork bark flats, you sometimes see a little bit more of them because you can see them behind it, wherein if they adapt to one of these, they go inside. You don't see them unless they come out and you, there's not like a little window in the side. And it might give them a little bit more security. So we're going to go that route. So here we go. We're out of practice with this because we haven't done it in a while. And I was just saying to Billy that all my good rehousings in the other house, I wonder if that good karma was left there. And we kind of reviewed what we thought was going to happen before this. I'm hoping it will just come right out. Now, again, the paper towels I put down because if the spider decides to bolt, it can go to those paper towels, hopefully hide instead of going right out onto the floor. That thing is wedged in there. I'm hoping to get, I did get some footage of this one the other day eating. So if we don't get good footage, they really are stunning. If Billy wants to get in. Beautiful. Now, obviously, they're called the half and half of the Darth Maul because the black and the red. Gorgeous spider. All right, so let's see if we can get this one out. Now, these guys obviously have been growing quickly. This was a sling in October of last year, and now it's pushing eh, about four inches or so, so pretty good size. I cut this out because the only problem with these cylindrical ones is that they don't... Oh, oh, oh. I'm going to try to get tricky with this here. Hey, you know what I just realized? We don't have cardboard. Ooh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. No, no, we want you There's out of there. There's a lid over here that you can probably use. drag that out. Put this here. No, 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 no. All right, so if you want to get a nice, whoop, whoop, whoop. Let's see if I can turn this around. Whoop, whoop. There you go. Some footage of that there. I don't know that's showing up. There we go. Gorgeous, gorgeous spiders. I just absolutely adore the looks of them. Now let's see if we can get this one to go inside without issue. Oh, you can see how quick they, yes. quickly they move right there. All right. All right, so far so good, except the cardboard issue. Let me get this out of the way. Now feeding, as slings, they were voracious hunters. I would drop in little, I think I was using red runners at that point, but obviously small mealworms would work, small crickets would work, and I did not ever need to feed mine pre-kill. There were always voracious hunters, didn't seem to have any fear of the prey items, which is great, I always loved that. As juveniles, they were up to medium to large crickets, no problem, and this one's now eating one large cricket every, a week or so. I usually try to feed all my guys weekly and it's not because they need that much food. It's because it allows me to check on moisture and make sure, you know, the ones that are moisture dependent have moisture in there and they're make sure to pull out boluses, fill water dishes. So, but I will say now that I've, you know, been in the hobby for a little while longer, it's usually closer to about six weeks or so. All right, so we broke there because I just went and found some cardboard because apparently I forgot how to do these things. There you go. Oh, what a beauty. 
And this is where it gets tricky. Now this is where I like sometimes having the ones with the openings in the front. So for those of you all producing these, I would be interested in seeing one that opens from the top and the front, only because it makes it a little easier. Uh, I need you to kind of go in. Oh. There you go. That was not what I planned on, but it worked very well. All right, so here's where you get your nice, beautiful close-up of her. I just, I'm enamored with those. They're so darn pretty. And you can see the red and black that give it its common name, the Darth Maul. Yes, I'm sticking with it. So Mopius Victori, just gorgeous, gorgeous spider. Now, I will say my one lament here was the plan was to put a pothos in here. Normally, I would have some type of foliage, and I may add one eventually. Normally, when you use plants, you want to put the plants in ahead of time, allow them to acclimate, but I may cheat, get one nice and acclimated. I will probably drop a piece of cardboard down in here to block her off and then plant one in the side. I'll plant it ahead of time so it's all set and then just drop the little pot in because I really would like to have some type of plant in there. And I found that for people have been asking me as far as the quote unquote bioactive enclosures, I don't know if I'm doing bioactive enclosures as much as I'm doing tarantula enclosures that have plants in them. And I found that the pothos work great. So there we go. First rehousing in the new house and the new tarantula room went well. Move this over here a little bit. You can see it with the other camera. Thank gosh, because I was joking with Billy beforehand, like I could really see the spider going right up the ceiling and realizing that it was just the, the good energy in the old house that led us to all these nice rehousings. But what we'll do is right when we get off camera, we will feed this girl because she needs to fatten up that booty a little bit. And she will absolutely be getting a water dish. So don't be afraid that I'm going to forget it. It's going to go right around in here. So there we go. Woo! I'm sweating like a pig. It is hot in this room. Salmopius or Salmopius. Victori, the Mexican half and half, or Darth Maul. I'm going with Darth Maul. Okay, again, that went rather well, thank gosh, because this is a very fast species. These guys are known to be one of the quote-unquote teleporters, although I found that the larger specimens don't move quite as quickly. Don't get me wrong, they can move, but if you stay calm, keep them calm, you can remain in good shape with the rehousings. Now, just to note, moving ahead, we're going to be making some changes to some of the formats. There's been things I've wanted to do for quite some time, but space has not permitted. So expect some changes, but we're not reinventing the wheel here. I've had some people concerned that I'm going to go all Hollywood. Now it's going to be very much very similar to what you're used to. Just little tweaks here and there to make the videos more accessible to people, more packed with information, changing up the format so it's a little easier to find the information. As you can see in this video, we've already started to make some changes. It'll still be Billy and I in a room together. It'll be still Billy filming. We do hope to get a better camera going in the future. But that'll be a ways down the road. And obviously we're shooting in the room, which is something I couldn't do before, which is going to be awesome and much, much easier. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you liked it enough to subscribe, very much appreciated. You can click the little circle right up there. If you want to check out some more videos, you can find them over there. I answer all comments, hopefully getting a little quicker at answering comments now that we're all moved in. So if you leave a comment, I will answer it. Hope you all have a fantastic week and a good holiday, and I'll catch you guys next time.